Hello, this is Mr. Felipec, and this video is going to deal with fermentation. Uh, so I guess the question is, is what happens to our bodies or organisms if oxygen is not present uh, to go through regular cell respiration, where you go from glycolysis to the Krebs cycle to electron transport chain? Well, that's what fermentation is. And uh, basically where fermentation fits in is it happens right after uh, glycolysis. And so we don't have we don't have any Krebs cycle or any electron transport chain. And what fermentation is is a way for our bodies or an organism to release energy from food um, when there isn't any oxygen. And that's pretty important because think about it. Uh, right now your bodies are breaking down and regenerating ATP at a rate of about 10 million a second. And that could be low, it could be high, whatever. But the idea, though, is, is our bodies are using a tremendous amount of energy. And there are basically two types of fermentation. Uh, one is called lactic acid, and the other one is called alcoholic. And believe it or not, we're familiar with both. Uh, one we're going to use when we bake things. Uh, the other thing, uh, lactic acid, we're going to use um, when uh, our muscles are deprived of oxygen. And so let's take a look at lactic acid fermentation, the one that we're probably most familiar with. I mean, how many times have we ever, you know, gotten done after a workout in gym and the next day you wake up and you're like, man, I am so sore. Uh, well, that is lactic acid. Uh, lactic acid builds up in your muscles. And when it does that, it causes our muscles to fatigue or get tired. There's nothing more in the world that I wouldn't want more than to try to do 5,000 push-ups. But after push-up number three, uh, my body is, is hating life. Uh, I'm, I'm very tired, my arms are weak, shaking, things like that. So let's talk about what happens with lactic acid fermentation. Uh, here we have our good friend glucose, and again, that's energy that's stored in food, uh, broken down into pyruvate, as it always is, through the process of glycolysis. And if you remember in, in the video regarding cell respiration, uh, we net 2 ATP uh, through glycolysis. And so after we create pyruvate, uh, pyruvate then, if there is oxygen, will typically go into the mitochondria and stuff like that uh, and generate all those electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. But if there is an oxygen, well, what are we going to do with this pyruvate? Well, we can't just let it sit there and accumulate uh, because cells can ill afford to be creating things and just wasting time. Uh, life doesn't have that uh, luxury. And so uh, a mechanism was... Uh, you know, derived here where we're going to take pyruvate and break it right into lactate uh, or lactic acid. And it does that by taking the energy that was stored here in NADH. And if you remember from cell respiration, NADH is nothing more than an electron carrier uh, that's going to be passed to the electron transport chain to kind of release some energy and make buckets and buckets of ATP. Well, that only happens if we have oxygen. And since we don't have oxygen, this stored energy here is going to be used to convert pyruvate into lactate. And so this lactic acid builds up, builds up, builds up in our muscles, and all of a sudden our muscles become tired, uh, and then we can't do any more push-ups. What happens to this lactate? This lactate uh, is, then enters the bloodstream. That's why it's important uh, to always stretch uh, after any workout or for feeling sore, because we want to work that lactic acid out of our muscles. Uh, lactic acid will enter our bloodstream and be sent back to our liver, which, believe it or not, will be converted back into pyruvate. Now, why would our bodies do that? Well, remember, fermentation is here uh, to keep producing energy in the absence of oxygen for the hope that if we can keep breaking down glucose, as we see here in the pyruvate and netting these two ATP, maybe our bodies or an organism will be... Um, you know, have oxygen again at some point. You know, think about it. when we're working out, maybe we're not breathing properly and we're, we're kind of holding our breath, we're trying to get through it. Well, we're starving our body of oxygen. And so our muscles need that uh, in order to go through the regular cell respiration. And so lactic acid or lactate is converted back to pyruvate in our livers uh, and then hopefully sent back to the mitochondria in the presence of oxygen. And then everybody loves everybody and, you know, cell respiration goes ahead. The other type of fermentation is called alcoholic fermentation. And uh, we usually see this uh, when we're uh, baking or using yeast. And so this process that's diagrammed here uh, is commonly found in yeast. Uh, 
So here again is our good friend glucose, and again through the process of glycolysis, it's broken down into pyruvate. No different. We're still netting those two ATPs. But if you notice, pyruvate has one, two, three carbons. But if we look at the end product here, ethanol, ethanol only has two. Well, life can ill afford just to lose carbon, so we're going to kind of release uh, one carbon uh, as carbon dioxide. And so unlike lactic acid fermentation, which was a one-step process here from pyruvate straight to lactic acid, if you notice here that alcoholic fermentation happens in two steps, where pyruvate is first broken down into an intermediate called acetaldehyde. And in that process, we're going to lop off one of these carbons as carbon dioxide. And if you know anything about baking, you know, we put the goopy brownie mix into the oven, set it and forget it for 8 to 12 minutes. We pull it out. We have these fluffy uh, little morsels of goodness. Uh, well, what makes brownies and bread rise? Well, it's this release of CO2 which causes that rise. And whenever you cut in a cake or a bagel or something like that, and you see it, it looks like uh, air holes. That's where carbon dioxide once existed. And so pyruvate, its first step is broken down into acetaldehyde. And then again, uh, much like we saw with the lactic acid fermentation, the energy from NADH is used to power uh, the change of acetaldehyde into ethanol. And uh, ethanol then uh, is toxic uh, to not only the human body, uh, but to other organisms. And so uh, ethanol then is broken down by our smooth ER, uh, which then will detoxify uh, the ethanol and, uh, you know, get things back to normal for us. Okay, and so a little review on fermentation. Uh, again, fermentation happens when cells are short on oxygen. It's an anaerobic process, so it doesn't require oxygen. And remember, the whole idea is that fermentation is going to keep going until oxygen is present. I mean, that's the end goal. Can we keep pulling energy from our food uh, in times where we're deprived of oxygen to keep our bodies going in the hope that we can keep this process going on long enough to where we get oxygen and then can undergo full cell respiration. Again, the two types we briefly discussed here was lactic acid and alcoholic. Again, lactic acid uh, is done by animals, plants, bacteria, things like that. Alcoholic is done by yeast. And again, the whole reason for this is to produce energy, um, you know, when oxygen is low. And obviously it doesn't require oxygen because it's anaerobic. Uh, I really like this next slide because it, it kind of breaks it down. On the left-hand side here, we have lactic acid fermentation. And again, we go from glucose to pyruvic acid right into lactic acid and two ATPs. And remember that fermentation itself does not create any ATPs. These two ATPs are created in glycolysis. The whole purpose of fermentation is to provide an energy source, uh, NAD+, to keep glycolysis going, to keep generating those two ATPs uh, when we're very low on oxygen. And again, lactic acid fermentation happens in bacteria, plants, animals, and is the primary source for muscle fatigue. Alcoholic fermentation, on the other hand, again, we start with glucose, we go to pyruvic acid, but then we develop ethanol, 2-ATP, and carbon dioxide. That's a pretty important idea here. We need to make sure we understand that we're going to yield carbon dioxide from alcoholic fermentation. And again, the organisms that we study that use alcoholic fermentation are yeast. And so to review here, again, we start with glucose and we end with pyruvate. That process is glycolysis. And then we kind of have a fork in the road. If we have oxygen, we'll undergo uh, aerobic cell respiration where pyruvate will be changed into something called acetyl-CoA, which we talked about in the cell respiration video, fed into the citric acid or Krebs cycle, and then that energy that is generated from that cycle then gets passed on to the electron transport chain. If we have no oxygen present, we're going to undergo fermentation. And depending on the organism, we're gonna, it's going to go under ethanol or alcoholic fermentation, or lactic acid fermentation. And again, the whole purpose of that is to generate energy to keep glycolysis going so we can keep breaking down glucose or breaking down all the energy from our food in the pyruvate for the hopes that we can keep this process going uh, until oxygen is present and then we can get the full complement of ATPs. So again, just to review,
cell respiration as a whole. We start with glucose, and in glycolysis, we break down that to pyruvic acid. And again, we have that fork on a road. Uh, if we have oxygen, it'll be fed into the mitochondria. Citric acid cycle turns and turns, and remember, we get a little release of carbon dioxide there. All that stored chemical energy will then be sent to the electron transport chain, where we'll generate up to 32 ATP. If we don't have oxygen present, then our bodies will undergo fermentation, as I click back to the previous slide here, uh, and show either ethanol or, in our case, lactic acid fermentation. But just remember, with uh, cell respiration, uh, each step along the way is going to generate a little bit of ATP. Uh, glycolysis will generate 2 ATP. The Krebs cycle will generate 2 ATP, 1 per turn. Uh, and then the electron transport chain will generate a total of 32 ATP. Well, I hope that kind of breaks down fermentation for you uh, a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching.